can a MacBook actually handle deep learning, run large language models like Llama or Mistral, generate images using the stable diffusion and power AI agents? Or is it completely useless for serious AI since it doesn't come with CUDA or NVIDIA GPUs? The truth might surprise you. That's why in this video, I will break it down for you to show you exactly where a MacBook signs or where it falls short. So let's get started. I have already made a video showing how a MacBook can handle AI and machine learning. But this time we are going much deeper. A MacBook isn't just for the basic. It can actually take your advanced AI work like deep learning, large language models, stable diffusion and even agentic AI. The first big advantage is the unified memory. On a typical laptop, the CPU and GPU have separate memory pools, which means data is constantly shuffling back and forth and slowing things down. On a Mac, everything is shared in a one big pool. That smooth flow makes a massive difference for AI models. Then there is the neural engine built just for AI tasks like image recognition, natural language processing, and core ML apps. On the top of that, you have got metal performance shaders, Apple's GPU acceleration layer. Frameworks like the TensorFlow and PyTorch are optimized to use it, so even fairly complex deep learning models run faster than you'd expect on a slim laptop. You can spin up a CNN to classify cat versus dogs in just a few minutes, or play around the RNN for text prediction or even experiment with the small transformer models. That said, there are limits. Once you move into the territory of billion parameter GPTs or ImageNet scale datasets, things fall apart quickly. Models may take up hours or days per epoch and in some cases, your Mac simply won't have enough unified memory to even load the model. Long training sessions can also trigger heat and thermal throttling, which makes the experience frustrating. The smart approach is to treat your Mac as a platform for learning and prototyping. It's perfect for testing out new architectures, running experiments, or building proof of concepts without needing access to expensive hardware. And here's a nice bonus, even if you train bigger models elsewhere, you can often bring them back to your MacBook for inference. Running smaller GPTs, vision models, or lightweight agents locally is surprisingly fast and efficient. Which means you don't always need to stay tied to the cloud, in short, Max really can train AI as long as you play their strength and know when to pass the heavy lifting off to something bigger. Now that we have seen how a Mac handles deep learning, let's level up to the LLMs, large language models, right on your laptop. Here's what surprises most people. A 16GB MacBook can run a 7B to a 13B LLM models locally. That's roughly on par with the 8 to 12GB NVIDIA GPU which is pretty incredible given Apple's silicon design. With tools like the Llama.cpp and GPT4All, you can run offline AI assistants, generate embeddings, or even power small AI agents. But let's talk about bigger models. Once you move beyond the 16-24 GB range, NVIDIA's GPUs still dominate in raw speed. Nothing beats them for a model that fits into their memory window. However, when you go above those models, many NVIDIA cards can't even load the models. That's where a MacBook Pro with large unified memory signs. The M4 Pro and N4 Max can load and run models well beyond what mid-range GPUs can handle. What if I told you your Mac could generate AI arts, design thumbnails or experiment with different styles without a desktop GPU? Sounds wild, but it's true. Apple Silicon is surprisingly good at running generative models like Stable Diffusion, and the experience is a lot smoother than most people expect. Thanks to the core ML and the metal performance shaders, tools like the Diffusion B, Automatic 11.11 with Apple optimization, and Invoke AI can run Stable Diffusion locally. You can generate images in seconds. Now let's be real, a high-end GPU like the RTX 5080 will still blow it out of the water in raw speed, especially if you're doing large base generation or heavy training. But compared to the most laptops without a dedicated GPU, the Mac punches above its weight. Now let's level up, your MacBook can actually run agentic AI that do real work for you. Smaller quantized models are lightweight enough to handle tasks like summarization, note-taking, or basic code assistance locally. And you can even chain them together to automate multi-step workflows using the lang chain. For heavier tasks, a hybrid setup works best. Your Mac runs the local orchestration, handles file access, and executes simple reasoning steps, while cloud LLMs take care of the advanced logic and heavy lifting. That gives you portability without giving up performance. For raw deep learning speed on massive datasets, the lack of CUDA and Tensor cores is a limitation. So if you are thinking about getting a Mac or any other laptop for AI and machine learning, I will drop the best buying links to the laptops I will personally buy if I was starting AI and machine learning right now. And hey, if you are in a confusion whether to buy a Mac or Windows for AI ML, head over to the next video where I'll break down the full comparison of AI and machine learning for Windows versus Mac. See you over there.